ICT has been with us for many years now, but schools and colleges vary enormously in the way they've chosen to embrace new technologies and how they integrate them into their teaching. New Line Learning Academy in Maidstone, Kent, is on the outside a rather conventional looking secondary okay, school, okay but on the inside, it's something very different. Good, I'm just coming around to have a look at what you've done. ICT is an integrated approach to the use of technology in the classroom. Um, it's not just about having a whiteboard on the wall, it's not just about giving students um, a learning device. It's about the software that backs it up and it's about the teaching pedagogy that works within the classroom to deliver the, the effective ICT and to deliver effective learning. The Academy's vision is everywhere. It's not just in children carrying their own personal computers around. It's meant a completely new approach to both the virtual learning environment and, most strikingly, in the physical learning environment. The Academy has begun to reinvent the classroom. OK, have you got, has anybody got any examples of a fly on the wall documentary? Anybody got some examples? Ocean? Big Brother. What is the difference between Big Brother and EastEnders? What are the differences between the two? Because I know some of you um, had a few difficulties trying to uh, understand the concept, what the differences were between them. This Year 7 lesson on reality TV is taking place in a prototype open plan teaching place called the Plaza. In EastEnders they're acting, but in um, like Big Brother they're doing it for real life. Excellent. I think that's a really good example. I think that's a really good way to explain it. You're being filmed at the moment, OK? Can somebody tell me how that makes you feel? How does it make you feel? being filmed, because this might help us to sort of understand how celebrities feel. Josh? A little nervous. A little nervous, OK. The learning that goes on in here is very much based around the concept of project-based learning, where the students are given a, a question to answer, uh, a meta question, if you like, and the students actually have to use their own intellect to, to take, them, take themselves through the, um, the programme of study themselves to create a final result. You are creating your own reality TV show. It has to be really, really well thought out. The script, your characters that you're going to have in there. You've got to do it on Word. And you can do it on Word, you can do it on PowerPoint. It's up to you how you want to present it. You've got the tablets, you use the applications on there that you feel more comfortable with. It used to be the old school hall, so if you can get most of about 60 students in here um, and all the furniture can be moved so we have sort of movable desks that you can place around in the middle and these big green auditorium bananas that, as we call them that we use for group input so generally you know you get the students in any sort of group input would be done on the green bananas um, and then students can either go off and do sort of individual work or we can put them into groups so you've got the scope you've got this room you've got everything all the resources here to do is do what you need to do to, to make this fantastic reality TV show. You are allowed on your tablets, OK? Um, and what I suggest, if, you, if there are a few that want to work on the table and there are a few that want to work on the bananas, that's fine. If you want to work in pairs on the bananas on your, on your tablets, I haven't got a problem with that. Yep. Excellent. Off you go. Each of these Year 7 students has been issued with their own yeah, tablet computer. The school took the decision to go down the, the mobile devices route. It has required considerable investment to sustain this level of funding, which I think is about 7% of our school budget. I need to put it on PowerPoint. Why? It's a lightweight, ultra-mobile Q1 PC that they have. I like computers because we can take them out and use the on-screen keyboards. And I think it's good because if we um, take the screen out of the case, you can have it up to your face. On tablets, you've got voice recorders so you can use in lessons. And you've also got Movie Maker and you can make little clips of movies like for science and English. The school's completely covered with wireless internet access, so students, wherever they are in the school, outside on the playground, when they're in lessons, in the corridor, have internet access. But getting students to rely on internet access for their learning proved problematic. It obviously threw up issues in the fact that not all of our students have got internet access at home. So we've done a lot of work with um, Mason Borough Council, who've been very supportive of us at New Line Learning, with a project called the Mason Digital Bubble. They set up uh, a series of transmitters in the areas where students didn't have internet access. It, it hasn't covered all of our students, but again, it's... Um, it's, it's certainly helped, it's helped a great deal. 
As well as handing personal computers to its Year 7 group, New Line Learning Academy has given small mobile devices to these Year 11 students. Using your iPod Touch, access what's on here, and you've got to turn the information and the questions into here into a mind map for each of the poems. They've got their GCSEs coming up. They're a group of students that are being targeted for additional support. And I wanted to, to see whether enabling the students with, with a form of technology would enhance and improve their, their learning experience and therefore improve their GCSE results. We just sort of like been told what we've got to do, sort of like mind mapping. It all fits onto one page still. They're given this device on the proviso that they write their learning journal once a week. That's the only condition. The result of which we have found motivation has really gone through the roof. Uh, these students now are performing exceptionally well and we're expecting really good things from them. Both the Year 7's tablets and the Year 11's mobile devices use the school's virtual learning environment, Schoolbook, to link everybody together. We wanted to develop something that was, you know, easy to use. Um, the students could pick it up quite easily, and you know, it was easy to access both at school, at home, and on any device. So this is the work that my students have been working from at the moment. It's a project called "Who Are We and Where Do We Come From." Um, when they click on this in the library, they get the introduction page. So the introduction page, I always have set out as what lessons they're going to be and then the learning objective with each lesson. We consulted with staff and said well, what do you want and they came back and they said well we want something that allows us to put learning pathways in, we want something that, that allows us to work on the fly so if a student has a good idea in the lesson we can just quickly put it up online as they give it to us so to speak. Um, we want something that if we do arrive a little bit late for school one day that we do have the opportunity, we, we, we can upload work into this in, into this area where students can access. I might not always use um, a computer-based task, but I will always have the learning objectives and some sort of picture resources up there. So when students come to do revision, um, or if they want to access the work at home, they've always got something online that they can, can look at. OK, so what cell do you think this one might be? Um. You're not sure? Right, have a go back to school book. Right. OK, so did that look similar to the ones you had on that picture? So go back to your Word document. Do you think that looks similar to those? Yeah. What gas might this carry around your body? Um, what do you breathe in? Oxygen. Yeah, well done, OK. So that's how this is specialised, in the fact that it can carry oxygen around your body. I've downloaded it. Right, specialised cells. OK? Oh, I've done this one. I know, quite a lot of you have done this one. So, one. shh. Shush, hands up. Oh, Holly, I'm going to pick on you. What is this? What's... Excellent, well done. It's a sperm cell. Now, a sperm cell's got two things that make it really good for its job. Ashley, what's one of them? The hair is really important, it goes into the air. Excellent. Excellent. And the tail works to swim. Students can post completed work online for marking. So when I go to Macaulay's workbooks, um, he's obviously got a science workbook here um, and I want to mark his fertilisation piece of work so that's dead easy, I can get a comment on there. So I'm just going to download his piece of work. OK, that's good, he's got the right uh, science terminology in there so I'm really pleased with that. He's got the sperm fertilising the egg in the correct place and he's actually given it the correct scientific name as well for it. So now I'm putting a comment on um, Macaulay's piece of work. I think he's done really well. I'm going to look at a comment that Miss Ferriero posted me. It says, excellent, this is a really good piece of work. You have used scientific words to explain what is happening. But Schoolbook isn't limited to communication between teacher and pupil. I like the emails because we can talk to other people around the school and it doesn't have to be just friends, we can just search for people, write their names and then you can talk to them. And it's fun because you, you can talk to them about the lessons and all of that. In common with Facebook and Bebo, you invite your learning partners to become part of your learning group. You can only comment on the workbooks and on blogs if you're within um, 
a social network of somebody. So, for example, I might invite somebody to my network. I mean, say, Kirsty here has invited me into her network. If I accept her, then I will be able to email her as a student. From a student's point of view, they can create their own security blanket of who their friends are, who they want to have to be able to communicate with them via Schoolbook. The common aim of Schoolbook's virtual learning environment and the plaza is to encourage interaction between pupils. Back in the Year 7 English class, the students are working together on their reality TV show designs. Um, what's our theme song? I don't know. What can we have as a theme song? <laughs> In a classroom, the students will be regimented sitting down in desks and told off for standing up and walking around. In the plaza, they're expected to do that. Tamara, Tamara, can you come here quickly, please? In, in our show, yeah, we're going to do, but I come on, yeah, this is the start. I come on singing, yeah, and uh, George is going to dance. Will you dance with George with me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. dancing in my show, no. Yeah, yeah, you two have to, <laughs> you two have to make up the dance, yeah? Can you give us a song that you can dance to that I can sing to as well? Teaching the students good social skills, teaching them emotional intelligence is part of them learning in this environment. Right, OK, listen up. Can we have a pair, and I think we're going to use Ocean and Georgia as an example. Can you come down here, please, and just explain to the group, OK, what your reality TV show is about, what characters are going to be involved in it? Um, ours is about the New Line Learning Factor. It's like X Factor, but um, it's New Line Learning Factor. You get to do whatever talent you want to do in it, singing, dancing, football skills, whatever. And um, our TV presenters are Ant and Dick. And at the first part, we're going to do a big theme song, the first bit, like, to welcome the show. And uh, I'm going to see and Georgia and Tamara are going to dance. Anything you want to add? Excellent, well done. Good description. It sounds like an interesting reality TV show. Grab a seat there for me. Well done. I love teaching in, in the, the plaza environment that's been created here. There is improvements to be made and I'm looking forward to um, you know, the second and third generations, but I do foresee that this is a model, perhaps, of what classrooms of the future will look like. As far as new line learning is concerned, moving forward with ICT has required the bringing together of new technology, the software behind it and the space in which it's used. Technology nowadays is a real integral part of students' lives today. You know, they've all got mobile phones, they've all got PSPs at home, and at the end of the day, they are a technologically enabled generation. And as educators, we've got to look at that and look at, you know, what, what students are using, what they're doing, and using that to enhance the way we educate students today.